ice have some of the best flow in hockey history. I don't think you can underestimate the value of good hockey hair. Some were iconic. Nobody else in the Western world has a mustache like Lanny. Others were legendary. Some interesting fans that show up at the rink and a chance to see Yarmir Yager. <laughs> they mulleted it up. He even had a good laugh. And some, well, were not so pretty. I guess it would be a, a, uh, as Will Ferrell deemed it a skullet. This is the top 10 hockey hair. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another Sports Center Top 10 special. I'm Darren Detition. As always, we are glad that you tuned in. Now, we've done all kinds of these Top 10s, but never one quite like this. This is all fun. Now, you've heard the expression about having a good or bad hair day. Well, these guys had the best or worst hair careers. On today's show, we look at the most memorable hockey hairdos, from players to refs to coaches. We begin with my Sasky buddy. Barry Melrose. This is a guy I have known for over 30 years, and he still has the same hairdo. Barry Melrose had good hair. Long, unruly. You're talking about a prime mullet, like slick back on the side, slick, 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 and then that good Saskatchewan look in the back. I've always taken a lot of heat for my hair, but it's usually by bald guys that don't have any. The thing that was different with Barry is, we're used to it in players, we didn't see it a ton with coaches. Coaches are prim and proper. You know, I mean, you're, but he's in L.A. He was in a perfect spot. Well, that man's got to be, I would think, happy tonight. Uh, Barry Melrose, uh, the Kings, with a consistent effort to, from the start of the game to the finish. Barry, much like Ryan Smith, just never really gave up on the mullet. His hair was his ID. He's got some swagger to him. He's got some presence on the bench. And he's got the longest mullet. He made mullets popular in Los Angeles. Barry fit the mold, didn't he, of the L.A. Kings coach. I mean, he's in Hollywood. He had the Hollywood looks. And his team almost had a Hollywood story. I never got a haircut because we were winning. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not superstitious, but when I coach, I, I never get a haircut and when you win. So that was basically two and a half months I never got a haircut. And it was long, when the, so that's why it was so long that by the Toronto and Montreal series. He's got a good set of hair for 53. Might as well keep going. I think you should color it a little bit. It's getting a little gray, but come on, Barry, let's go. It was uh, ultra dynamic. It was... <laughs> I guess it would be, a, uh, as Will Ferrell deemed it, a skullet. That was horrible. That was terrifying. Now, Al, we had Al in the studio once, so I would never say that to his face. because he was, he was a big, strong, scary guy. But that's where you have to Pierre Maguire your head and shave that baby. It was on high alert during the All-Star game when he shot it. Yes, 105.2, 105 miles an hour. He didn't wear his helmet in the All-Star skills competition. He was skating around with, uh, you know, with the long hair in the back and the patch on the top. Al was uh, a unique individual. Uh, won by his own uh, drum, um, uh, hardest shot in the NHL. Probably, if he had composite sticks, might, you know, might have set records that, that were never passed. 102.7. <laughs> Well, he didn't lose any strength when he had his hair cut. But the, the unique hair dude, no doubt about that. L.A. Freddy gets hit, and he slides along the dasher, and he hits the partition. His helmet flies off. Now watch that edge. What? Bow! And now Al does not want anyone to know that his hair and that he's going bald. So his helmet's there on the ground, and he crawls three feet to get to his helmet, puts his helmet on, and then lays out like he's knocked out. When I started going bald in sixth grade, you know, I was kind of in denial, so it just kind of evolved. <laughs> Al was trying to hold on there, I think. And there was, you know, there, I think we'll probably all get there one day. It was um, summer hair. Some was here and some was there. Um, love Al, big blast, but that, that hairdo had to get chopped down early on. Get out the razor, shave her all off. I did, I shaved it off. Uh, I turned the page and uh, right after I retired. I guess, to me, in a, in a sport in which you're sweating all the time, it always made me think that he was really hot. You know, and like, I mean, just, just because you've got the helmet on and you got the, you know, the hair dangling down there with the dreads, and uh, it was a new look in the NHL then, when, when, Anson, when Dance and Anson Carter pulled that off. Actually, that was more, uh, those weren't the Bob Marley dreads, though. Those were the, the kind of the, the tighter on dreads. If Yags can have hair that can almost touch the, the, the small of his back, then I think uh, Anson has full right to do what he does with his hair. I grew my hair up Mason the Bet and 
kept it ever since. Oh. It was Joe Thornton and Jason Allison. We, we had a little bet going on in Boston. I was, I was bald, believe it or not, back in the day, because I used to love Michael Jordan. And then they bet me to grow an afro. And I was like, okay, I'll grow an afro. And I was like, you guys are gonna make it worth my while. And my sister says to me, well, you've grown your hair for like a year now. Why don't you just twist it and see what happens? I go, you know, I never thought about that. Go and get it done, twist my hair, I come to the dressing room, Bernie's like, what the hell's going on here? I think dreadlocks are awesome, first of all. So I give them points for that. It's something the National Hockey League I hadn't seen before, which was really cool. And yeah, I mean, he scored one of the greatest goals in world championship history for Canada with the locks. So I think that made them, that gave the locks a bit of legendary status. Here comes Anson Carter over the line, fires a shot, Telfus makes the save. He's got the wraparound! Canada has won the gold medal! Bob Marley on skates. Um, they had to, they had to find extra, extra, extra large helmets just to, just to fit Anson's head. Then he would put it in a, in a, in a big bun and then try to put his helmet on. Um, but it was a very cool look. I could live in Scotty Hartnell's hair, and he wouldn't even know I'm in there. I, I don't even know if he can describe it. Um, <laughs> it's uh, shaggy, I guess. In 2010, uh, I probably had it going for about two, two and a half years. Uh, and that's when we made uh, the playoffs in the, on game 82 against the Rangers in a shootout. And uh, you know, then I let the, the beard go and the hair go. There's a look at Scott Hartnell, last haircut nearly a year and a half ago. We tease him all the time about his, uh, his hairdo and his beard, you know, but Scott's always a good sport about it. Um, he laughs it off and he's, he's pretty good at giving it back to the guys himself. Yes, it's Hartnell wig night tonight here in Philadelphia. They had a Scott Hartnell wig hair night, yeah, yeah. Uh, that they gave away to, you know, f uh, five or six thousand fans and, you know, I was skating around and warm up and all these kids with, uh, you know, the curly locks on. I said to a couple teams, I've never seen uh, better looking fans, uh, better looking hair in the, in the stadium ever. So, yeah, we had fun with it. I think some guys' hair fits their personality and Scott Hartnell's fits. I mean, what? I, I am so entertained watching him play because he looks like he's one step away from being totally out of control. And it's like his hair just fits his personality. He's out there having fun with it and, you know, usually something charitable comes out of it by the time he takes that hair off. I went to the barber and I said, I want to do uh, Locks for Love. And, uh, you know, I did some research online by myself and just went one day to the salon and, you know, showed up at the rink the next day and it was all chopped off. That's got to be a weird feeling. You, you think about in the in the playoffs, this is what you're used to seeing Hartler with the big locks. <laughs> that head yeah. must feel what, about what do you good. Think the over-under is on the number <laughs> of wigs they could produce out of that. It wouldn't work on me. It wouldn't work on most humans. But for some reason, it works on Scott Hartnell. It just goes with his louder-than-life, bigger-than-life persona. It's rock star hair, and Hartnell's a bit of a rock star. Up next, no matter how much you hated his calls, you can never hate his hair. Gary Fraser, Wait a minute. he's got the hair dryer. <laughs> the hairspray goes on first, I guess, or is that second? Kerry Fraser is up next. <laughs> Welcome back to the Top 10 Hockey Hair Show. Now on this show, it doesn't matter if you're a Montreal Canadiens legend, a journeyman defenseman, or a referee. The criteria is to have memorable hair. And there's no disputing the next three, starting with Guy Lafleur. The guy was all kinds of smooth. Flying down the wing, flow going, scoring goals. Here's Guy Lafleur. How much attention did you pay to your, your hair? I didn't pay any attention oh, to it. Oh, come on. Tell me the truth. Did you comb your hair between periods? No, never. Guy Lafleur was magic. And th that was the great thing about then is the personality of it all. He, he looked faster because he had no helmet on and the hair was whistling back. I would watch the Habs in the playoffs and Guy Lafleur with that hair streaking down the wing, uh, no helmet, uh, so much uh, flair to his game and scoring a big goal with the hair just blowing in the breeze behind him was pretty neat to watch. Nobody made hair with more graceful than, than Guy Lafleur. Um, skating up the ice is, uh, you know, it almost seemed like his hair was literally, you know, straight back because the speed he was going on, it was never, it's almost like he was in a wind tunnel. Even in the days when black and white TV was like so grainy you could barely see it, you could still see the hair flapping as he went down. Chelios picks him up, centered, shot by Lafleur, put in by Lafleur! 
He was starting to thin for a little bit there. When you're known for your hair, it, it'd probably be pretty challenging to lose it. And then, you know, I, I feel for those guys, you know, and then you try to throw some plugs in there and, and you try to help it out a little bit, but that's a, that's a tough one. Surprisingly, as good a skater as he was, I can't believe that he never skated out from underneath that hair piece, but um, there's one guy that could, could wear it in our league, there's one guy that wore it well, and he was it, for certain. Can't take away the legend, but uh, yeah, you know, I think fans, fans want the hockey hair to be real. They don't, you know, it's a good, it, it's a good thing this, the flowy hair lasted long enough through his prime, because the plugs, I think the career sort of went down as the plugs came. <laughs> Kami was a character. I sat beside him in the locker room in 2006, and, and uh, I mean, he had the, the afro going, the bathrobe. The red hair have become a common sight throughout our BC Centre, as you see the fans sporting his look. It took out a life of its own. In fact, I think uh, had Twitter been alive or, or in existence in 2006, like it is these days, the fro would have had its own account. It would have documented uh, what was being stored inside the fro, where the fro has been. This is, I mean, this is Krusty the Clown. Uh, again, it was great because it, that was the year they went and won the Stanley Cup and they were selling these wigs everywhere. You'd go to Carolina and 5,000 people would have these red wigs on. There was no tame in that thing. That thing would be, it would took up two seats of the bar. I mean, it, it, it needed clearance to the side, so it was fun. It was fun to watch. I don't know how he got his, the lid on, though, and, and was able to get the the strap on and buckle it down because that salad that he had up there was incredible. Oh, uh, he just wet it down. He greased it up. I mean, yeah, Connor, I, I, I think he went no bucket for warm-up and then uh, wet it down for the game to, to keep it tame. And it looked uncomfortable to me, to be honest with you. When I saw Connor, I said, ew, God, can you shave that thing off? It looks, it looks itchy and rough and a little gross. I mean, what critters could live in that? Great stuff. The big redhead, he got the Stanley Cup in Carolina, and it was uh, it caught fire there. He had the bathrobe he was wearing with it, which went real well with the red hair. Mike, the beautiful presentation. We talked about the robe at length the other night. Uh, tell us a little bit about it. Well, it's uh, my Christmas gift from the Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, we had a little gift, like a little list of things we could order from. And a lot of the stuff was barbecue sets and real domestic stuff, and uh, I wasn't, really wasn't interested in that. And this looked kind of interesting. Look at the fans here in attendance with, with the bathrobes. <laughs> They're having a great time. We probably talked about Commodore as much as any player on that team. Maybe Cam Ward more because he won the Cons Mike, but... And this is a guy who otherwise we would have never mentioned. Nice to see a guy who just has fun with it. And then shaved his head, I think, for a fundraiser. So uh, I'm a big fan of that, too. If I say a referee with great hair, do you think? Uh... Kerry Frazier. Best hair in hockey. Without question. Oh, it's Kerry, of course. Kerry Frazier. Kerry Frazier. Never a hair out of place. I mean, it's, it's, it's perfectly quaffed. Um, we always, you know, did games thinking, is it going to get ruffled? You know, is it going to move? Um, he's, he's blessed with good hair, that guy is. I always tease him, ask him how many cans of hairspray he used before he came out on the ice, because no matter how fast he went and no matter how many pucks he dropped at center ice, never was there a hair out of place. Never. Gary Fraser, Wait a minute. he's got the hair dryer. <laughs> the hairspray goes on first, I guess, or does that second? I think the game got ruined when he had to put a helmet on. You know, they made them put on helmets at the end, and that was, that was all she wrote for me. I thought when the refs went to helmets, if he was really thinking, he would have worn a clear helmet. For years, he put tons of product in that stuff, right, in his hair, so you might as well have kept it encased. The man has perfect hair. You think if uh, Maurice Richard got his Grecian formula uh, commercial back in the day. Hey, Richard, two minutes for looking so good. How does Kerry Fraser not have his own line of uh, hair care product? Kerry was in on our panel during the playoffs. And I, I borrowed his hairspray one night because I had some flyaways. And I, I felt like I'd been touched by God. I don't know what kind of gel he used, but it, uh, it did the job. I asked him jokingly, what hairspray do you use? Oh, it's, it's Paul Mitchell number four. You have to use the Paul Mitchell number four. Nothing ever moves. Coming up, one of the greatest mullets of all time. Went all the way almost down to his nameplate on, his, on the back of his shirt. And a man with picture-perfect hair. Male model playing hockey. Maybe the best-looking guy he's ever played in the NHL. Numbers three and two are on the way. When you think of hockey hair, you probably think mullets. In the 70s and the 80s, mullets were the norm. I even had one. 
Well, these two next guys wore the mullet better than anyone else, and the ladies loved it. Everybody wanted to play like Yarmer Yager, but look like Ron Dugay. Here's players three and two. Well, the next superstar in this league may be Yarmer Yager, just 19 years old. This kid is still in high school here in Pittsburgh. He was one of those, uh, again, highly skilled guys that the hair kind of told the story, just free-flowing. Uh, pretty much did whatever he want with, wanted with his hair and also with the puck on the ice. You know, he's a tall, so tall, at 6'4", and, and had such presence on the ice, and then he had that, just that seven yards of hair that came down from the back of his uh, back of his helmet. Yager to the right wing, Pittsburgh 3, the Capitals 1. Yager around a man, coming right for the net, his backhander. He shouts and scores! He beats Bo Prey like a rented mule! And the Penguins have a four to one lead. Yarmir Yager. When he signed with uh, the Flyers, you know, my family and you know my close buddies all text me like, oh, you and Yager are gonna have the sickest hair in the league. <laughs> Yags uh, is the first one to laugh about his hair himself. Um, he's very laid back about it. Some interesting fans that show up at the rink and a chance to see Yarmir Yager. <laughs> Look at this collection of guys. They put all his sweaters together, they've mulleted it up. Great team by team you think they're having fun and and y and yager ends up noticing them right about here there's the yager salute and during the warm-up we even had a good laugh i interviewed him um which was really fun to do and uh we pulled up his draft picture and he started to laugh right away and the hockey hair of course is i mean you know it's it's its own era and and his was i mean his was probably the the flowiest of the flow. So high and tight up top, but still went all the way almost down to his nameplate on, his, on the back of his shirt. Yager would be the king of the mullet, probably, because the, that is the single greatest mullet of all time. Well, at the time in 77, where you were allowed to play without a helmet, which I don't recommend nowadays, um, a lot of guys weren't wearing helmets. I just happened at the time in 77 that the hairstyle was long. So I was wearing my hair long and just flying, and, and because of, I think I was, uh, I had a certain style about how I was playing with the long hair flowing. In his day, in the city that he played in, you know, like, it, it was just perfect, right? It was the, it was just like, that was him. That was, that was as much a part of his equipment as his, as his stick. I, I can't even imagine him with a short haircut. There's probably three or four different variations of the Dugay, and they were all great. They got a little bit crazy at times. But at the time, in the 80s, every woman loved Ron Duguay, and frankly, every guy admired Duguay's hair. We all wanted Duguay's hair. Guys had some ugly stashes going on, and a lot of the guys were wearing long hair, so it was acceptable among the players, but some of the fans choose to pick on me. Mainly guys. Girls didn't mind it. Ron Duguay, the only thing I remember, I know he had the long hair, but I kept getting his hockey card every year. It was the most common card. Every pack I opened was a bald Ron Duguay, and I kept thinking, who is this ugly guy? And it turns out he's probably one of the most handsome guys with that hairdo for years playing for the New York Rangers. I played with Dukes in uh, Detroit, uh, male model playing hockey. Maybe the best looking guy that's ever played in the NHL. So it was just, you know, Dukes is just, uh, just amazing. Yeah, he, uh, he still looks exactly the same. I wasn't getting enough attention. I felt I could have had a some sort of shampoo endorsement, which I never got. In every building I went into, whether I was in Philadelphia or Boston, uh, those two places there in particular, the fans were giving it to me about the long hair. The teams that don't wear helmets in warm-up, they love that moment because it's their one moment to show all the fans in the lower bowl how cool their hair can look. And they're so jealous of the Ron Duguay's of the world who got to do it all the time. But Duguay is the king. I think if you mention great hockey hair, Duguay is the synonym for that. Well, he didn't lose any strength when he had his hair cut. You've seen 10 through 2 of the best hair in hockey. Yes, it's Hartnell Wig Night tonight here in Philadelphia. Now stick around to see who made number one when we come back. <laughs> It's like he stepped right out of a time machine. Ryan Smith, helmet, hair, circa 2003. If you want to go with your big time, hardcore mullet age, Ryan Smith is right there. They get another opportunity, and Richie scores! And just like that, the Sharks have the lead. He's a scary guy anyway. And just the long, straight hair on a guy, for whatever reason, that scares me. 
Is Alfredson a better player with long hair or short hair? Dark hair. I think Wayne Gretzky reflects his time. If you did a little time chart on Gretzky's hair, he had the big mullet when the mullet was big. He had the big puffy flow when that was big. He had the short, stylish puff. Wayne Gretzky's kind of the hair of our times. All right, we may have taken a little creative liberty with our number one selection for hockey hair, as his hairdo was really nothing special. But how could we ignore the most iconic duster in NHL history? Here's Lanny McDonald at number one. Is there any piece of hair more identifiable with a hockey player than Lanny Stash? The NHL's best mustache, and it belongs to Lanny McDonald of the Calgary Flames. If you were to go with like the hair, the hockey hair hall of fame, Lanny Stash is at the top. It's part of Lanny. You know, you, you think of Lanny and you, you know, I, as long as, I, I'm, long as I've ever seen him, back to when I was a kid watching him when he was with the Leafs, um, I, I don't ever remember him without that stash. 1974, I started to grow it at the end of the first season. There's only one rookie card that doesn't have the mustache, and I have never shaved it off since. Uh, I'd have to go into hiding for two years and grow it back. <laughs> I don't know how he could look down and see the puck. You know, at one point you got to see the puck, and he saw it. 500 goals, a great sniper, one of the all-time great right wingers in the history of the game. Donald puts it back in the net for McDonald, and that's where he scores. Here's number 500 for Matty McDonald. Here's my question, though, and say when McLean is coaching Ottawa, how do you eat with that thing? Are you? I mean, is it like you're scoring for the winner? Eventually, some of it's still there. Nobody else in the Western world has a mustache like Lanny. Never forget it. I mean, it's just such a character. Um, it's the one characteristic that always stood out to Lanny McDonald. It looked pretty good when he won the Stanley Cup as a member of the Calgary Flames. When he lifted the Stanley Cup, that mustache was glowing. That was as, as good as it looked. I think that is, you know, maybe the greatest, one of, one, of, one of hockey's greatest little trademarks. If Lanny ever shaved and sold that mustache, you could probably make a fortune. We hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you again next time.